There's a passage in the canon where the Buddha is teaching his seven-year-old son. And it's a passage that bears frequent reading, frequent reflection, because it contains a lot of the really basic principles of the practice. Basic not in the sense of Buddhism for dummies. Basic in the sense that the basic pattern of all the teachings is contained there in that set of instructions. You can look at it as the Buddha's introduction to meditation practice, because meditation doesn't start on this cushion. It starts in your daily life. The Pali word for meditation, bhavana, means to develop, develop good qualities in mind. And it's important to look at the qualities that the Buddha is recommending that his son develop. The discourse starts with a passage on truthfulness. You get the feeling that his son Rahula probably lied during the day. When the Buddha comes to see him that evening, he, Rahula sees him from the distance, sets out some water for washing the feet, and as the Buddha washes his feet with the water, he leaves a little bit of water in the dipper. And he shows the little bit of water to Rahula. He says, see how little water there is in this dipper? Rahula says, yes, sir. The Buddha says, that's how little goodness there is in someone who tells a deliberate lie. Feels no shame at telling a deliberate lie. You can imagine Rahula cringing. And then Buddha throws the water away. See, see, see how that water is thrown away? Rahula says yes. And that's what happens to the goodness of a person who feels no shame at telling a deliberate lie. It gets thrown away like that. The Buddha then turns the dipper upside down and then shows him how empty and hollow it is, again with the same message that when you feel no shame at telling a deliberate lie, your goodness gets turned upside down and is empty and hollow. So what the Buddha is establishing here is the principle of truthfulness, that you're honest about what you do. And this means not only honest with other people, you have to be honest with yourself. Honest about what? Well, the rest of the discourse goes on to point out that you're honest about your actions before you act, while you're acting, and after you've acted. Take a good close look at what you're planning to do, what you're doing, and what you've done. Before you do it, look at your intention. This act you're planning to do, what do you expect to come about as a result? And are the results you expect going to cause any harm? If they are, don't do it. So there's an important principle right there, that your intentions are important, the consequences of your action are important, and you want to act in such a way that doesn't harm anybody. This is the beginning of compassion. And while you're acting, again, this covers not only physical actions, but the things you say and even the things you think. Look at the results that are actually happening, because sometimes things happen that you didn't expect. And if there's any unexpected harm, stop. If you don't see any unexpected harm, you can continue with the action. And then when you're done, reflect on the results of your actions over time. And if you see any unexpected harm, if it was a verbal action or a physical action, go and confess it to somebody, somebody else who's also on the path. And Get advice from that person. If it was simply a mental action, he says, well, develop a sense of distaste for that action, something you don't want to do ever again. You don't want to think in those ways ever again. This establishes the principle that you shouldn't be ashamed to try to hide the results of your actions from other people. You should be open about your mistakes. If you can be open about your mistakes with other people, it's a lot easier to start being open about them with yourself. And learn from the wisdom of other people. The Buddha doesn't have you reinvent the Dharma wheel every time you act. If, however, you notice that there was no harm from your actions, then the Buddha says, take joy in your practice. 
and continue with the training. There are a lot of important principles here. The principle of truthfulness and integrity, the principle of compassion. These things are essential to the practice. Even the mo most refined teaching that the Buddha gives on the topic of emptiness follow the same form. Get your mind into a state of concentration and then look at it. Don't make assumptions about what it is, but just look at what your intention is that maintains that. See if there's any disturbance in it, and also appreciate where there's a lack of disturbance. The lack of disturbance here corresponds to a lack of harm. The disturbance can be equated with harm on a very, very subtle level. But the important thing is you look at your meditation in terms of an action and a result. Because all too often people slip off into the idea if they've got this sense of infinite consciousness, say, and they identify with the infinite consciousness. This is their true being. And they make all sorts of assumptions based on that. Or they can go into a state of non-perception. There's nothing there at all. They make assumptions based on that, forgetting to look at the fact that the state of concentration was something they did, and they're now experiencing the results. And the results have to be judged. The action has to be judged by its results. So whatever level of practice you're on, simply on day-to-day -day interaction with other people or whether you're working with your mind, this is the pattern the Buddha has you adopt all the time. Look at your intentions, look at your actions, look at their results, and then adjust things based on that. If you see that the results aren't as good as you'd like, go back and look at the intention, change the action. This depends on the principle of integrity and the principle of compassion. These are the basic Buddhist values. These are the basic values of the practice. And they can be applied at any level. Among students in a classroom, or just interaction with other people. Or as you're sitting here meditating, remember you're, you're doing something. The principle of karma, which is the Buddha's basic teaching, underlies everything, realizing that your actions are important. They do have consequences, and you have the freedom to change the way you act. If you see that the consequences are causing harm, causing suffering, you can change the way you act. You have that freedom. You can learn from your mistakes. After all, the Buddha himself started off making a lot of mistakes in his practice. All those years of self-affliction, extreme austerities, six years of a big mistake. And you can think of the pride that went along with that. He was able to do without all kinds of pleasures, all kinds of comforts. I mean, practically starved himself to death. He held his breath until he went unconscious. He ate so little food that even just the effort of urinating or defecating, he would fall over. He was so weak and thin. In a case like that, what keeps you going with is a strong sense of pride. You can do without things that other people can't do without. But finally he was able to overcome even that sense of pride, to realize okay, there was something wrong with what he was doing. This couldn't be the right way. There had to be another way. And he totally changed his understanding of the practice, totally changed the way he practiced, and was able to find the way out of suffering. So as we practice in our imperfect ways, it's good to remind ourselves that well, the Buddha himself started out imperfect as well. As we make mistakes, it's good to remind ourselves that the Buddha made mistakes as well. But he also pointed the way out of your mistakes. 
you can change the way you act, and it's important that you do. Because your actions shape your life. The pleasure and pain you experience in life comes from your actions. And so when you notice there are problems in your life, look there at what you're doing. What are your intentions? What are your actions? What can you change? But this requires that you be very honest with yourself, that you have the integrity to admit your mistakes, to see the connection between your intentions and the results of your actions, and the compassion both for yourself and for people around you not to want to cause harm. Once you develop this kind of integrity in your day-to-day -day life, then it's a lot easier to bring the integrity into your meditation. Because integrity lies at the basis of meditating well, too. This is why the precepts are so important. They develop this quality of integrity. If you can't be honest with yourself on the blatant level, it's very hard to be honest with yourself on the subtle level of the practice. So it's good to keep reflecting on those instructions to Rahula, because they form the basic pattern that underlies everything in the practice. Your actions are important, so be very careful. When the Buddha ended his teaching career, he ended with the word, bring your practice to completion through heedfulness. What does it mean to be heedful? It means that you have to be very careful about what you do, because what you do does make a difference. And it does make a difference to be hateful. If everything were totally predetermined by some principle of fate or ironclad causality, nothing would make any difference at all, and the Buddha wouldn't have any reason to teach. If your actions didn't really make a difference, there'd be no reason to be hateful. But they do make a difference. And the care you take into looking at your intentions and looking at the results of your actions. That's what determines whether you'll be able to complete the path or not. It's when you're looking for a Buddhist principle to apply in all areas, well, this is it. Be careful about what you do. Be heedful about what you do. Because it makes an important difference in your life.